ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hendrik here with Red Ice TV today with another great show for you lined up with Morgoth's Review. He's a gentleman that I've tried to get on the show for some time. It was actually a really good video made by Aaron Kasparov back maybe two years ago, maybe even more. I forget when it was. And it was an article written by uh, Morgoth's Review about, essentially, to boil it down into the, the most simplest sense, uh, Sargon's uh, promotion of individualism. Uh, versus uh, the uh, efficacy of collectivism or how the collective can, can operate against the individual. We might have some time to talk about that later, but that's kind of an argument that wasn't that uh, pr prominent at the time, but it has since been. So maybe a little bit less uh, less urgent to discuss that, if you will. But anyway, uh, Morgoth, great to have you with us today. Uh, how's everything on your end? I'm, I'm doing very well, thanks. Thanks for having me on. It's, um, it's nice to finally appear on Red Ice because I was a little bit just used to blogging in the past and not doing audio and things but I'm a lot more comfortable with it now nice yeah of course you do uh, you have a in addition to your blog you do have a YouTube channel now you do YouTube videos how regularly like one every every week every other week what would you say I, I go for what well, um, about two a week it depends on on like real life work and stuff yeah but I'll, I'll, I'll go for try and even when i was just doing the blog i would always try and get something substantial out for the weekend and um the reason why i started doing youtube videos was because it was easier to turn on a mic and uh sort of talk for a little bit than blogging right writing was actually hard work when you edit it and um it was because i had it, it's on top of doing a normal job, actually writing a sort of thousand word article twice a week was was quite a lot. And I thought it's on YouTube, I can just kind of speak it. And it was after I went on Millennial Wars, I had I found more confidence and uh, decided to do it more. Because at first I was worried nobody would be able to understand what I was saying because I've got a thick, thick Northeast accent, but uh, uh, it doesn't seem to matter. You're coming, you're coming in loud and clear. <laughs> we can hear just fine. No, it's great to have you here, and, and thank you for doing what you're doing as well. Uh, some of your videos are, are, are magnificent, uh, really good. I, we were just talking before we uh, got on here, uh, watching your, not your absolutely latest one, but the, the, the one before that about uh, the Extinction Rebellion, and that's actually something I wanted to talk about as well, but we're talking about your intro a little bit, which is, which is hilarious. I was asking about the theme music, which I finally... I called it the right time I heard the first time I heard it was like oh it's from Superman but then I googled it and I couldn't find it but let's let's look at this folks because I think you'll enjoy it as well here, here it is here I'll turn up the volume a little bit here as well so people can hear that there we go look at this <laughs> nice all right so that's <laughs> the whole the whole, <laughs> the whole thing with hate reading the guardian was because ali especially when i was doing the blog i became kind of used to covering some very very heavy subjects which we can't really talk about on youtube now and um, it was nice to go from that to sort of deliberately going for ridiculously low-hanging fruit and just rolling with it and having some fun with it because uh, uh, you can get bogged down in the really serious stuff. And so I try for like once a month or something to look at just the most ridiculous article I can find at The Guardian and then, and then just tear it to bits and have a big laugh at it because uh, that's what it deserves. And I think it's good for morale as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's what it is. Uh, ridicule is a very effective uh, weapon uh, in our arsenal. It's certainly used by our enemies as well uh, against the things that they don't like. And it's uh, it, it, now they're such easy targets, as you say, too. It's amazing that there aren't more, uh, well, you know, what t movies, TV shows. And I mean, it's, it's even that some of their own are starting to eat each other over the rid ridiculousness. But it's it's a it's a, as you say, it's a fruit ripe for, for picking. But anyway, uh, so this is this is a lot of fun. Uh, what you do going into the Guardian and kind of looking at some of their articles, making fun of it, and and uh, uh, breaking it down. How long have you been doing the blog though? Before that, if we talk about that, before we go into actual stuff about the Extinction Rebellion here. I started the blog in. Um, <clears throat> I started the blog in uh, twenty. It was Christmas of four, 2014 going into twenty fifteen. 
And the reason why I got stuck with Morgoth's review was because I would go on the the Daily Telegraph in the comments section and at Breitbart, and I was always, uh, you know, trolling and trying to read people, uh, red pill people under the under the main articles. But I kept getting banned. And when I would go back, I would have a different Tolkien esque uh, name. And then I finally got just tired of being banned, and I happened to be on. Um, the one called Morgoth, when I opened up the blog, I thought I, I want to have a place where I can't be banned anymore. And I'm learning all of this stuff and I want to just write it on my own blog where I can't be banned rather than um, just sort of fritter it away on all of these comments, which just keep disappearing because I'm, they're being deleted all of the time. And so eventually that's how it ended up being uh, Morgoth's review. Is, is that how and you got the? Uh, sorry to interrupt. But is that how you got the very thoughtful URL of n w i o q e q k d f blogspot.com as well? It's because um, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I've always been <laughs> technology, and I tried writing it in, and it wouldn't accept it. And I ended up just mashing my hand into the keyboard, <laughs> and, and then that one it did accept. So nice. that, that, that's how great things are born. Right. Um, I always, I always people can still find it by searching for Morgoth's uh, review. It's actually the, yeah. the top three results. Uh, I was surprised. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by that. Was, that's great. Uh, Google actually spat out your blog, your YouTube channel, and your Twitter account on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, well, it's not a title that triggers the the algorithms really. It's and to be fair, I've always had a very heavy focus on sort of pop culture and. Um, movies and and what's going on in the here and the now as well yeah so I, I tend to fly i've tended to fly under the radar um quite a lot all right well why don't we uh talk a little bit about extinction rebellion obviously you're in the uk uh so that we could talk about some of the things going on over there i mean there's so many things to discuss about uh from demographics to uh crime to islamification to all these kinds of things but one of the bigger movements right now is well in addition to i guess the, the brexit uh, issue that's happening and we'll, we'll hopefully we can squeeze that into here a bit later but the extinction rebellion the, the climate craze is just out of control in a lot of uh, western uh, european countries right now the the, the states included unfortunately uh, you know this swedish young girl greta thunberg is kind of heading is really becoming the face of that uh, i did a video on that too that was going down fairly well but what can you say about the extinction uh, rebellion and is it uh, is that something that came out of Britain? I think I've seen the most of that particular movement out of the UK, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think the uh, it well they talk their social media and stuff. They talk about having like what I don't know what you'd call them cells or something, but across sixty countries. But it definitely seems to be um, centered around London. That's where the hub is. Which is is interesting because London is like the historical city of of the money, the money power, and globalism and whatnot, and this is where they have chosen to be most prominent. I believe today or yesterday they've shut off an airport. Uh, one of the main airports in London's been shut down because of them, and yeah, as you see on the screen there, they wear all of this freakish garb and uh, terrify everybody but they have largely been mocked because they do come they don't look like a grassroots movement a grassroots movement doesn't look like that the a grassroots move, movement has a couple of signs with some with some cheap paint on them and you know they, this looks very professional and also very middle class <laughs> right. by the way very very middle class and uh, it's a bit ridiculous, to be honest. But the, the I think I mean I got into it on me me Guardian here read the the they're pushing at an open door because what they're saying to the elites is you have to have more power and more control to save the planet. Um, they they have arrested quite a few of them, but the, by and large it's it's seems a bit fake. I mean last week they had a, a fire engine which spray painted this red dye all oh, over I saw the, that. Yeah. The, 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 the exchequer or something. And then they, they'd obviously never done real work before because they didn't understand how to handle a high pressure hose. Um, and it sprung out of the hands and went everywhere. 
but they, there was like a, a, a Channel 4 uh, news team was on hand to record it all. And like, you have to ask, well, where did you get a fire engine? And why did the security services allow you to park it outside of such like one of the most prominent buildings in London? Where they, they, they wander into the very seat of power in, in Britain. Uh, and Mark Collett said on his show last night that if, if it was a nationalist group or some dissident right-wing group who did that, they'd be called terrorists and uh, absolutely destroyed by the security forces. And yet in the case of Extinction Rebellion, the police dance along with them. They, they actually dance along with it and um, get on board. It's, it's very strange. I'm looking for the tweet too. Uh, there's uh, one gal on Twitter. I think she goes by yeah, the European housewife. She oh, there it is. Let me pull that up there too because she had that uh, on her tweet as well. She said, "My husband is a fireman. It's impossible to steal a fire engine. The keys are locked up and have GPS trackers. They know exactly where it is at all times. It's hard to start up and drive one. Take special training, and we have security. Something is off here. You know, words kind of implying that someone on the inside was uh, more than willing to uh, to help out in this little stunt." Yeah, um, that makes you wonder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which kind of goes to the heart of what you're talking about here, that this is essentially uh, a globalist-run uh, promotion, a campaign, essentially, to get people to... Um, yeah, as you say, essentially, if we just dive down into the, the, the essentials of this, give up power. That's, that's what they were arguing in the Guardian article, too, that you go, go through, right? We have to have more control... Uh, you don't know what's best for you because we're all going to die in, I don't know, what they pick up on this Green New uh, Deal uh, story about 12 years, I guess, as well. We're all going to die in 12 years, therefore, give us all the control, give us all the money, and we'll we'll make you, we'll, we'll take care of you. We'll keep you safe, right? Yeah, yeah well, th they, are, they are demanding that the, the elite take that power and then do it. And so um, th where we will, they go, I mean, in the, the Guardian article that I went through, they were, Polly Toynbee was actually saying they should ban beef. And you end up in a situation where we are all going to be put in pods and we're all going to be have to be at maggot sausages in Mega City One um, while the global, and, and Extinction Rebellion is demanding that the, the global elite actually do that. Now, the the, th the the way to look at this, I think, is if you remove that Extinction Rebellion from the equation, and then this is what the global elite want to have happen every, anyway. It's all about just making you a unit of consumption and production, living in your pods and eating maggots, maggot burgers. Um, th then if they were to just come straight out with that, the, then everybody's going to riot in the streets and say this is ridiculous. It, you know, if um, the, the Giva Hofstadt at the European Union or the head of the IMF or the United Nations, if they said, okay, that he has the plan, we are going to ship you all into these mega cities and put you in these little pod complexes and we're going to put chips in your arms and have a cashless society and you'll just have to work and consume until you die, then everybody would reject the program outright. What Extinction Rebellion does is add a sort of moral framework to that. So then it becomes the moral thing to do. You have to, they want to get from A to, to C, but you have to bring in B, which then adds the moral part of the equation because then they can say, oh, we've got no choice. We have to do this to save the planet. And it becomes much easier when you have a controlled opposition like Extinction Rebellion. Yes, exactly. But this is what they do. They create uh, movements which you, which they, you know, kind of pose as uh, as grassroots or this this comes from the people or whatever. Uh, but as you say, very, very advanced in terms of the, uh, the the marketing of this, the the logos, the flags, and everything. I mean, I got kind of uh, I honed in a little bit on their symbolism as well, which is the, um, the hourglass. I think they even release a free paper, by the way, that you can get. A, I, I would assume it's in the UK called the Hourglass. Uh, which is interesting enough. This theme of we're we're running out of time. We don't. There is no more time. We have to act now. Don't think. Don't, no rational thinking about this. We're all going to die. It's a it's a scare tactics essentially to gain as much power in, in as quick time as possible. And um, because th this also has an effect on children, 
which oh yeah yeah it is you we i don't know if it was in britain or not but there was a, a young boy actually committed suicide because I, I think it may have been in britain but he had then sort of uh, been saturated in this this apocalypse this idea that the the ice is going to melt the sun's going to burn the planet up we're all going to die in 12 years and a lot of children are being completely traumatized by it and one one young boy uh, committed suicide because of it as well of uh, farida rightly and <clears throat> of course the 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 more minor part of that would be where the children will then put extra pressure on their parents to support the agenda. Yeah, here's BBC. Climate change, 12 years to save the planet? Make that 18 months. <laughs> that was released in July uh, 2019. So they're, they're certainly not, not doing anything to mitigate this, this traumatization of the kids. But uh, the reason why this is so effective as well uh, is because of guilt, right? That's why they wheel children at the front of this thing. They're hiding behind the kids. Uh, so yeah. that they can cry and scream and be traumatized. My mommy, daddy, or whoever they're calling on saying, do something. Why are you not doing anything? And it guilts the adults into thinking, well, what, what do we do? What's the option? And then you have the Extinction Rebellion groups out there saying, well, just just give the elites all the power and things will be great. I mean, the, the, the BBC article there is an interesting when they released that because we were having like the summer heat wave at the time. So everybody was walking around in their shorts and the T-shirts with a bottle of water. Everybody was hot and getting sunburned. And then somebody's decided now's a good time um, to, to rule this out, this idea that this is, this is going to be the norm. This is a psychological thing where, yeah, just look at it now. This is what it's going to be like on Christmas Day. And you've only got 18 <laughs> If it <laughs> oh god it's it's pathetic there was, one, there was one picture of a man and he was in london like part of the extinction rebellion and he had a photograph of his two children and he lay down in the street crying uh holding the the picture of his two children as if as if they had both just been killed in some awful accident and so a reporter went over and said, uh, like, what are you doing? What the hell is this? And then he just turned around and said, oh, I'm here with a protest. It's it's okay. Uh, it's all fine. And then, <laughs> and then he said, well, so what's your, what is it? And he said, watch, I'll show you. And then he put his head back down, looked at the photo again and started crying. Just, it was, it's all just a theater. Just, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it's a show. And of course, the, many of these uh, stunts that the Extinction Rebellion uh, do on the streets in, in the UK is to do die-ins, right? They lay down and die. They have coffins with them yeah. and all this kind of stuff. It's, yeah. like, it's like a death cult, right? Yeah, you can see it even in the clothes that they wear. It is like a death cult. This is the end of the world. And of course, they've. They, I mean, this isn't this isn't new. Um, no. It, it's, but it, it, they're doing it again, but for a political end. Yeah, exactly. They, uh, I think it was yeah Dave Vans on Twitter. He was posting a lot of this stuff here in the last couple of days. Doing they're doing like dancing to rave things. They're doing weird things on the streets, and it's like what what are they doing? What, who's this for exactly? Uh, I think it was this. Let's turn on the audio on this one a little bit. They're like raving away, and it's like adults and stuff like that here. Let's listen to this here. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> All right, that seems to uh, that seems to fix the climate right there, Morgoth. I I I remember a, a meme of Oswald Spangler, which just has his sort of miserable, serious face. And he says, I don't want to say that I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> yep. So all that kind of materializing through that craziness there. This is where civilizations go to die. That, that is absolutely correct. I mean, it is interesting that way. I mean, they don't they haven't picked the, the death uh, theme, if you will, for the same reasons that we kind of I, identify them with that as well. But it does interlock in an interesting way these different positions that it's like, yeah, it's, it's the death of our civilization. The West, this is where Western, uh, this, is the, this is the peak Western world right now. 
and he's obsessed about death and we're all going to die. And it's almost like an embracing of it, too. I mean, sure, they come with this idea, we have to stop it and whatever, but it almost feels like there's a there's a kind of a sadistic uh, embracement of it. Do, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, I definitely do. I mean, what's interesting to think of it, I mean, I, I talk about pop culture because I, I think, and we all know, you know, we all know who controls it, but that's why it's interesting to look at. And this, it, it, this dichotomy between is this just something in the zeitgeist or is this people making decisions in, in this case, it would be Hollywood studios. But what I, what I do find interesting is that, you know, in the Cold War in the 1950s, 1960s, you had that like 10 minute warning and people genuinely thought that missiles could land and wipe out uh, life on Earth and that it could happen at any moment. And yet the culture itself would be quite optimistic. So you, you could say uh, you would you would do the undercover where you had, again, school kids hiding under their desks because the Russians might launch their, their nukes. And they had people sort of had to live with this all of the time, but then they would go through that and they would watch that you know the deals over nuclear warheads and always images of mushroom clouds wiping out the world, but then they'd go off and watch John Wayne and Mary Poppins at the cinema. It was all it was all relatively the, the culture itself was optimistic, and yet today that's not the case. Today the culture is either this sterile, bland pop music or the Hollywood machine, which is just relentlessly pessimistic. All of these superhero movies where cities and nations are being wiped out, uh, all of them are like that, you know. And then um, we just look at the Joker movie everybody's talking about. Everything's run down and grotty. And so there's actually, it's kind of, the, the culture itself is full of doom and gloom in a way that it didn't used to be. Yeah. So that they're really an optimistic side to it. Yeah, that's right. And and at the same time, you know, we, we, we do have, of course, a lot of material success and stuff. But then you realize it's it's not about uh, that either. And and in this case, it's about inventing uh, a a plight, right? It, it, there, there are so many things that, that various groups do talk about and, and that what should be the primary focus of the culture, like, let's say, demographics or like uh you know low birth rate that they're like that these are the disastrous things or open borders or that the globalists are, are, are trying to uh, eradicate uh you know nations and individual cultures on uh it's definitely in the west but all around the world essentially and, and those things should be at the forefront and discussions we should have about how we're losing control we're, we're losing free speech we can't say anything anymore no dissent is allowed but then this comes along and kind of hijacks the the attention of all these other things that's happening and this is at the forefront uh, it's very bizarre it's, it's bizarre because we do we there is actually a serious discussion to be had about the nature of this technological globalist materialistic society and you know you've got to go back to uh, the, the early 1900s to people like Heidegger and Spengler, who are now, of course, very unpopular thinkers. And, they, they had, and you had some others as well, but the general thing was to have people say, oh, wait a minute, where is all of this going to lead? What, what effect is all of this having on the lived life of people? And um, it, it, they were never taken seriously because there was too much money involved and you end up where we are now. So the, the discussion we should have is one of, do we really want to live like this? What, even with all of the technology that we have, nobody is saying we have to be, you know, smash, smash the whole machine to pieces, but at least sort of ne renegotiate how we actually live in it. Or should, you know what I mean? Yeah, because it's like, I mean, there is, there are limits to growth. I mean, this is like the the, the false dichotomy of this, uh, the, I guess, the left, right, the conservative, liberal kind of thing that's going on, where the conservatives are like, that's ridiculous, like uh, economic growth, you know, like bring them all in and convert them to, you know, the Westerners, right? And 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 we'll yeah. we'll do economic economically, we'll do great kind of thing. They're trying to shut down our economy, but it's like. I'm sorry, but like, well, I'm not sorry, but it's not going to work forever. This is just this is not going to uh, function. Uh, we are uh, already at the precipice of 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 this uh, pop, you know, at the height of this population explosion, and at some point, 
either we take charge of this and, and, and start to direct things and, and decide where we go, or nature is going to do that for us, right? And, and at that point, if we have a colony collapse or some kind of disaster or civil unrest or something, it'll be, it'll be one of the biggest, uh, I don't know, die-offs, I guess, that we have, we have see, ever seen in human history. That's what, that's what awaiting us if we're just continuing the path that we are on right now. Yeah, and, and this is, is sort of hands in the zeitgeist and it, it sort of manifests itself in pop culture. I mean, you, the, the last uh, Godzilla movie fascinated me about what it was actually saying because, it, in effect, it was where the old gods of the, the, from the, the, the Mother Earth, Godzilla and then the other monsters as well, had come back to stamp out humans which were sort of as a like as a virus infecting the planet and destroying nature, and so the old monsters had come back to protect the planet. Now it's very interesting that all of this stuff is is sort of in the general culture. It's all in in the backs of people's minds, and I would say, why don't we just stop for a moment and ask ourselves what this is all for? What is its purpose? What is the purpose of the global economy? What is and and the conservatives, as you say, will say it's for goods and services, and yeah. it's like, well, do are, are they really that important to have? Are they more important than the actual quality of life? Because it's again the the sort of the early twentieth century thinkers who are reactionaries and on the right. Um, I think it was René Guénon. Was talk would talk about the the quantification uh, of the of the world where everything became a quantity to be consumed and it overrode the actual quality of life and so the the idea of sitting in a pod eating a maggot burger is where that all leads because if you've got the best iPhone and the the flat screen TV, um, that that but then that you're a success you've made it and it's all worth it for that. Absolutely. I mean, look at, uh, well, I mean, look at, look at, look at the matrix, right? I mean, that's really what awaits us if, if this continues to, to, to work out those kinks that might follow. I mean, we do have a establishment that not only want to push us towards utilitarianism because it's like, because they want to effectivize essentially, I, well, what, having as many people around as possible or something, you know, or, or, or for the sake of, let's say, demographically replace Westerners or something like that. That's why, like, just cram them all in, mega cities and stuff like that. But to deal with the potential fallout of some people being, uh, your, your biological entity might be unhappy if you're spending the majority of your life in, in a small pod. So the best way around that is just to jack you into a digital uh, world, a, a virtual space where you can run around, you can, you can do whatever you want, you can be whoever you want, uh, no restrictions, lo no limitations, it will be all uh, clean and nice if that's what you want, it could be a forever beach at, at a, at a, down in Bahamas or something, right? And and eventually we'll be fed like a single cell uh, protein or, or, or as you say, maggots yeah. or something like that. I mean, that's that's the future we're looking at right now. Yeah, I mean, that with, with the iPhone, they're already halfway there. Because it's it's not as sophisticated as the Matrix sort of jacking you in, but there's a I saw I saw a, an interesting meme last week where it showed you all of these people on the London Underground, and one of the photos they all had the iPhones, and then they had done that again, but they photoshopped out the iPhones, so they were just looking at their hands, and it was as if they were just staring. They were all atomized. Nobody was looking at anybody else. Yeah. Nobody was talking to anybody else and the, when you remove their phone they're all just looking down into their hands and it's it's all just this empty uh, being internalized so they're, they're actually quite far there with the with the, the the matrix scenario it's just it's in the form of the iphone that you walk around with and which your eyes are glued to all the time rather than having the the plug going in the back of your head yeah the, and all this will be very subtle the steps will be very gradual in the sense that it won't be a dramatic shift towards that i mean i think they they'll probably go towards like augmented reality uh initially first you know projections onto things or something that interfaces with your neural with your visuals you know um uh, your your eyes essentially 
where you, you know, you see certain things, there's like overlays on reality, right? And eventually you just, uh, well, remove the unpleasant things or whatever you don't want to see. And it, it becomes a very selective little experience. It, it's all ultimately, let's face it, it's it's escape from reality because we all know that right now reality sucks and no one no one likes where this is going. Uh, everyone sees that quality it's is going down the drain. Yeah, go ahead. It's also interesting that like what we're talking about now, which is sort of like the commodification of humanity, is, is this is the kind of criticism uh, Extinction Rebellion could be leveling at the elites and at the system. Yes. But they're not doing the opposite. They're demanding that the system has more power and more control to save the world from an abstract problem. Whereas the way, let's say, nationalists or people on the dissident right should be looking at this is that we're, we're not we're interested in how this is affecting the people more than the climate. How, how is the system, how is this machine actually dealing with people and it's dealing with us like like the maggots. It's I did a video on it called um, "Deep Fried uh, Human Nuggets," where you, you essentially they, they they're breeding a new kind of person, and um, what you end up with is where you're just because you can apply this to the way they've done it on chickens, their mass chicken batteries, and the, you get some chickens which are specially bred for the the breast. And then others which are specially bred for the legs. And the, the one that's bred for the breast can't walk because they're not interested in the legs. And it just lies, it spends its life lying hooked up with a tube in its mouth, which is feeding it. Um, and, and it's disgusting. You can see that optimal production would just be this ball of meat with a mouth and an anus. And, and <laughs> it's, it's kind of like where humans are on path to. Yeah, I mean, um, w w yeah. What what is it all for, right? W w what's the, what's the purpose of this this thing? What is the experiences that we do want? And right now, there's no. Uh, well, there are some people that do have direction and they know what they're doing. They want to try to mold and shape the world in in their image. They're they're getting us there. This is uh, all this that's happening right now is 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 a success story as far as they're concerned so far. Uh, but yeah. there, of course, are ruminations of, of uh, discontent underneath the surface that's bubbling up and that's why they're so heavily are trying to uh, block and censor and, and, and shut people's uh, ability down to communicate these dangerous ideas that are poking holes in, in this uh, new global utopia that they're building for us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, especially with when you tackle the the machine in that in these ways it does bypass a lot of the alarm systems as well essentially it's arguing from the left this is the job that the left have left open to people on the right to say well actually we think um living a genuine quality life is more important than having all of these consumer goods this this should be a left wing but they they've left that out they 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 become obsessed with the power and they've become sort of locked in the, in the system and in the grid themselves and so there's a there's a big uh, opening for dissident more traditional minded people on the right nationalists to say well it's not so much about hating other groups it's just that we want to have a genuine sense of being in community in our own country and it's going to be outside of this sort of controlled grid of global capital and um, technology yeah I, absolutely this is a very obviously important and interesting philosophical discussion to have and and it's one that we need to have more often and uh I do want to continue with this. There was just one thing I wanted to go back to before we lose kind of uh, the Extinction Rebellion and some of the things that they're promoting here, because it's very interesting. You know, we've heard in, in recent years, uh, uh, recent years, it's really the re recent few months now that this has picked up about how dangerous uh, people who are pro-nationalism are. It's, it's, a, it's a very uh, intense um, pressure, if you will, from the mainstream media and, and kind of the, the, the culture of, overall. But I heard something that one of the guys at the Extinction Rebellion was talking about, uh, speaking about uh, violence and things like that. Let's play this, and, and I'm going to get your take on this, because we always hear, of course, that uh, people object to this kind of stuff are the dangerous, violent ones. But uh, listen, listen to this here. We are going to force the governments to act, and if we don't, if they don't, we'll bring them down and create a democracy fit for purpose. 
And yes, some may die in the process. And yes, some may die in the process. Imagine if a, if a nationalist would have said that, Morgoth. Yeah, they'd, they'd be destroyed. There'd be an armed police force and helicopters. Uh, you'd be gone. You'd be gone off the face of the earth in no time at all. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fascinating. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, even it's for much, much less than saying something like that. Um, I did a video just somebody who called out uh, the local labor councillors on issues relating to child grooming and sex trafficking in a t town in the north called Sunderland, and he went to jail for 21 months because he stood in the middle of the town and had a big rant against who was responsible, and they carted him off to jail for 21 months. And here you have like a well-spoken man, um, very middle class, um, quite polished, talking about yeah, we're gonna we're gonna people will die. It's um. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we're going to haul you off uh, from from the holes of power, and uh, yeah, some people will have to die, but it's fine, you know, because uh, we got to break some of the <laughs> break some eggs in this in this wonderful omelet uh, we're we're making here. Um, uh, but but of course, as you say, this is this is being allowed, this is being uh, permitted because the, this group is is in the hands of the globalists. They're being used as a tool uh, by them uh, because it's effective to try to uh, get people to, I guess, give the appearance that it's some kind of grassroots support for. Us handing over power and, and influence to uh, into fewer and fewer hands. What, is there something else you've been uh, looking at when it comes to like the extinction rebellion of how they're being used or something like that? That's worth to to squeeze in here in the first segment before we uh, take a break in in a few minutes. Just one thing I would touch on is that by and large, as this sort of controlled opposition psyop, it's it's been a bit of a failure. It has become a bit of a joke. But that's but we've reached a stage. I mean, we're probably going to go into Brexit, where um, the the elite don't really care whether you believe it or not, because you've got no choice in the matter. So you you can tweet and you can make videos uh, laughing at Extinction Rebellion, but they don't care. Uh, they're just going to run with the narrative anyway, because there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, in the past, it used to be much more sophisticated. Occupy Wall Street and these kinds of groups that you can actually debate. I think that was actually legit, but got co-opted. But whatever the case may be, they, they, people seem to take them more seriously. Whereas we've reached a stage now where the elites say, yeah, okay, it looks ridiculous, but you know, we don't care because there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and it needs to be pointed out too for maybe newcomers, uh, newly uh, red-pilled people or whatever you want to call it. But uh, people are starting to question the lies and, and the uh, garbage that were being uh, being shoved down our throats that much of this, which the Extinction Rebellion kind of bases their, their hysteria around, has been uh, debunked. I mean, Climate Gate back in 2010, all this was centered around Britain at the time. Um, East Anglia uh, University, was it? Uh, the uh, Climate Research Unit, the CRU. A lot of the numbers that the IPCC gathered actually came from CRU. And this 1.5 degrees, which is the latest report that the IPCC released, is the whole basis of this. Oh my God, we only have 12 years because if one, it's, if it's an increase by 1.5 percent, it's all gonna, you know, we're, we're all gonna die. We're all gonna die in some major heat wave or whatever, you know, some horrible fire. Uh, but uh, much of the individual measurements that the CRU did was re released in these leaked uh, emails that they had been placed in very shady places, like uh, the parking lots. Uh, it had been placed in things which were artificially warmed by uh, human construction, uh, uh, denser areas. There had been fiddling with the numbers and stuff. I, I, can't, I mean, this was 2010. I can't even remember all the details from it. But um, Tim Ball, a lot of other people that covered this extensively back then, and it should have been an issue which was like laid to rest. And it felt at the time, Morgoth, that some of these things did die. The, the kind of the Al Gore was at the forefront at that time, and, and, and a lot of him and his work kind of felt like it was discredited. But now it's brought back again because people don't have that long term memory. Memory they can't even remember this, right? Yeah, I mean, according to Al Gore, um, New York should be underwater now. 
Oh, so and uh, he's just bought up a beachfront property in San Francisco last year or something, a really sort of slick mansion on on the beach. And he of all people knows that. Um, well, we we should be underwater, but it didn't happen. But it is, yeah, it is. It is something that they rule out this time. It's it's kind of like Extinction Rebellion is for the age of social justice rather than sort of tackling the the more thoughtful sits there and considers the facts and the science that didn't work so in the age of the social justice warrior we'll retail the same narrative and do it again for people these sort of emotionally distraught millennials and yeah. you can see that that's exactly what they've done yeah, it's, there's so many things on a psychological level which are clever and weaved into this because people do need a, a, a purpose. They need to feel good about something that they're doing and stuff. And so these groups and these kind of uh, uh, stunts or whatever you want to call it pop up on a regular basis, really, to to kind of allow people to flood and put their discontent into that, their their attention, their their focus. And and again, yes, there is a there is a very real and important aspect of environmentalism weaved into that. But as you uh, said before eloquently, it's a deflection actually away from the real kind of issues and and w what's happening with, with all the the, the chemicals and and uh, even uh, human medication being dumped in the in the water supply and you know, things that are altering us, that are, that are leading to weird, uh, other weird weird side effects. None of that is being discussed. Uh, it, it's essentially just pay more money and hand over power. That's all it, it is now at this point. Yeah, uh, the, the, the male suicide uh, epidemic across the West is, a, is another symptom of the modern world. And whether or not this is all to do with, it's not to do with the climate, but it is... Uh, to, to do with the way we actually live in the modern world, which is depressing a lot of men. And of course, this doesn't come into the equation at all. In fact, I ended up where you live in a pod and eat a maggot burger and watch uh, watch virtual reality porn on your flat screen TV, and that's your lot, is not going to help with that whatsoever. Um, but so in actual real problems which people are facing, they don't help at all. It's to further empower the elite to restrict how people live and actually get us into the pods. Yes, and uh, you pointed out in that article too, so a couple of interesting facts that we can squeeze in here before we take a short break, but uh, they were arguing for people uh, would stop stop flying, uh, don't, don't uh, travel, uh, stop, stop eating meat or beef specifically, I think it was as, as well. Was there anything else they added on to that list of what we, what we plebes need to do? It was um, what she said was that the they will make it so that driving and flying and eating beef will be made socially taboo in the same way that smoking was. That's right. So that yeah. this, this indirect pressure, and of course, in the end, smoking just became completely banned everywhere, and and eventually with vaping, it was kind of replaced entirely. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I used to smoke. And I didn't do it anymore. But the the point is, you can they can socially engineer things at that macro level um, to to change people's behaviours and away from say eating beef. I mean, a couple of people pointed out that the eating beef actually is genuinely terrible for the the environment. And yeah, so it gets back to that point again, where is it natural that four billion people on earth have access to stakes because all of that cattle has to be reared in let's say the amazon will be cleared or wherever there's definitely real deep discussions to be had on this subject is is should should beef be a luxury item there's a good case to be made for saying yeah it should but then we can substitute it with like fish or something like that but this is not really what extinction rebellion are arguing uh, for at all no it's uh you shut up you eat the maggots now uh you eat the you get the bugs and uh you know we at the top will we'll, we'll do everything as usual in fact we we get more luxury uh, we get more control, more money, more resources, and everything else. Uh, no, it, it's a, it's a total fraud, a total sham. If they were sincere about this, they wouldn't weave in migration into this as a kind of a, uh, you know, they oh climate. Uh, I've seen the links, right? Climate migration. Uh, we we have to accept immigrants now because of you know there's climate change in other areas, and and therefore bringing people, millions of people each year into kind of a Western 
world uh, lifestyle is is somehow going to aid this process. I think it's at the end of the day, it's I think one of the, their primary goals is demographic replacement, and and that's part of their control agenda, right? You, you destroy those pesky Europeans that might do some weird kind of uh, unexpected uh, things when it comes to protesting against their uh, uh, against their subversion, against their submission, right? And so they might kind of, um, there's a couple of examples that put it that way historically that, that uh, has given them pause. And they think, well, if we can destroy national homogeneity, if we can destroy the uh, ethnic makeup, the glue that makes up these various nations, globalism is going to be so much easier. Another plus side is they can replace Europeans specifically, kind of get they, them out of the picture. And I think that's related to what you mentioned before, that appreciation for freedom, uh, liberty, and that kind of thing is, is among the highest, I think, among Europeans overall. So we're, a, we're an obstacle in the way towards globalism. I would also just point out as well that what we see emerging from social justice, which is whiteness studies, which is where Europeans are sort of that they will call the whole system whiteness and say whiteness is something that has to be abolished. Um, that that ties in very nicely with this new climate agenda because it's the same system that they're talking about. A few of those kinds of headlines, which I was thinking about, like climate refugees, um, uh, population displacement, building a trade union, civil society, Guardian again, uh, Australia's Orwellian anti-refugee system hints at what's to come for climate refugees. Uh, everyone has the right to move safely and legally. CNN, climate change to create 143 million migrants. World Bank says, get ready for tens of millions of climate refugees, right? So we've seen these kinds of headlines uh, being pushed in the, in the mainstream for, for some time, time now, but no one questions uh, bringing millions of people into a Western lifestyle would um, be the worst thing for the uh, environment, in fact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's it's all one one humanity, uh, one mass, one big blob, and it will need one government to control it. That's right. Oversee everything. And it's uh, I mean, it's problem, reaction, solution, right? You create problems, uh, you offer the uh, you, you get outrage and then you offer the solution, which is, again, we'll take care of you. We'll uh, just hand over more control to us and we'll make sure it's uh, it's right. It's all it's all very clever. It's all in the books. But uh, let's take a break here, Morgoth, and then we'll dive into much more here in part two. But uh, plug some of your stuff then. Let us know uh, where people need to go, follow your blog, subscribe to your YouTube, Twitter, etc. Uh, and Morgoth's review on all of my platforms on um, YouTube, BitChute, which is becoming more of an important That's thing. That's right. Please. I do have to remember mentioning that. Thank you for bringing that up, by the way. BitChute and um, Morgoth's review on Blogspot as well is, is easy to find as well. Now, do the search work on BitChute? Let's see. I, I just know that sometimes it's not the best if, on there. If you type it in from Google or your search browser, it's... it's yeah, oh, I did find it there. Yeah, Morgoth's uh, review. Yeah, doing good on subs over there too. So that's uh, that's great. Uh, definitely. Uh... I the the I also do the occasional video. All of my live streams probably are going to go um, onto BitChute, and then from time to time I do a sort of monologue, which is a bit too hot for YouTube. That one in the corner there, called Cracks in the Goldberg, is an example of a too hot for YouTube. Um, video which i'll do f just for for bit you to help bit you along and they're, they're they're really you really see the difference as well they're they're popular when they just go on exclusively on bit yes yeah, it's, it's true no that's great i think i i think i watched that one that's about a month old i, I recognized the thumbnail i thought that that was really good uh, as well, and I, I forget, I think it was on BitChute then right away that I saw it, but yeah, some great stuff over there, so definitely make sure you subscribe to Morgoth's review on BitChute as well, but uh, guys, we'll, we'll take a, a short break here, we'll be back in part two more with Morgoth's review coming up, stay tuned, we'll see you on the other side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue in part two with Morgoth's review, definitely make sure that you tune in, we're going to continue to talk about Brexit, uh, demographic uh, situation, a new census that's coming out in the UK next year, that's going to be very revealing in terms of the uh, demographic uh, transformation of the, uh, of the UK, we're going to talk about uh, the increase in uh, knife crime, acid attacks, of course, uh, the kind of unholy alliance between uh, the left and Islam in the UK is kind of 
beginning to tear a little bit at the seams. We'll, we'll dive into detail about that and kind of discuss a little bit what it will take to uh, get people of English descent to realize uh, what the establishment is doing to them and what they actually want to, uh, what kind of future they want to create for their kids and their grandchildren. Anyway, a lot to get into, so definitely make sure you don't miss it. Head on over to RedEyesMembers.com, sign up for a membership with us. It's the best way to support us, and of course you get access to hundreds and hundreds of hours of good content, interviews, Weekend Warrior exclusive videos, a bunch of stuff is uh, in the member section for you as well. It's only about the price of uh, an expensive fancy cup of coffee uh, per month. We have subscriptions from three months all the way up to two years. And of course, the longer sub you get, the cheaper that is per month as well. But check it out, redicemembers.com. Great way of supporting us. We'll see you guys after the break. Tons more coming up, so stay tuned. Redice.tv and redicemembers.com. See you after the break.